<sighs> hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Keep your friends close and foes closer. A hero like Deadpool has a fair share of enemies. We're already aware that underneath Deadpool's jokester exterior lies a lot of pain. The villains we're talking about in this marvellous video would love nothing more than to add to his pain. From obsessed lovers to childhood best friends turned into foes, let's dive into every Deadpool villain to exist and discuss the vendetta held by each against our very own Wade. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. And by dance, I mean let's try to kill each other. Ajax. Starting off with one of Wade's most famous foes, Ajax. He made his name in mainstream media as the villain of the first Deadpool movie. He underwent several cybernetic modifications done by Dr. Killebrew as part of the Weapon X program. Ajax, also known as Just Francis, was also an assistant in all these tortuous experiments. In fact, he took great pleasure in inflicting pain on Wade, which induced his present mutations. Ajax also mercilessly tortured Wade's friend, Worm, forcing Wade to kill his friend to put him out of his misery. Ajax even ripped Wade's heart out and left him to bleed out, utterly unaware of Deadpool's healing factor that had kicked in. Wade was one of the few people who stood up to Ajax and eventually shot him in the head as revenge. Decked out in titanium-laced armor, Ajax is considered a powerful opponent. Thanks to his technical enhancements, he has superhuman attributes and can create sonic micro-booms that, in turn, allow him to wield fire. Strife. Strife is considered primarily a supervillain for the X-Force. Strife's story can feel a bit complex since it involves time travel. Also known as Commander Nightfount, he's Nathan Summers' clone. Strife was steadily brainwashed by the Apocalypse, who encouraged his cruelty. Strife founded the Mutant Liberation Front and gathered a group of disillusioned, anarchic mutant youths to fight for the mutant cause. An Omega-level clone of Cable, Strife had similar powers of telepathy and telekinesis. Strife was also part of the Legacy Virus Conspiracy. Unknowingly, Deadpool had exposed his entire family to the virus. In a desperate attempt, Wade had to reach out to Strife for the cure. Strife struck a bargain. He would hand over the cure if Wade agreed to give up four of his lives for his future. The catch was in the fact that the cure hadn't been fully developed yet. Strife also ordered Deadpool to kill his friend, Cable. He even held his daughter, Eleanor, hostage to get Wade to comply with his demands. Strife even tried to use Hope Summers to disrupt the X-Force and uncanny X-Force teams. Lady Deathstrike Yuriko Oyama Better known as Lady Deathstrike is a deadly villain who never hesitates to strike down her foes with her adamantium claws. Lady Deathstrike is the daughter of a lord named Darkwind who was notorious for coating bones with adamantium. Even after killing her father, she still carried out his legacy to hunt down Logan. Yuriko willingly gave up her humanity to the otherworldly witch, Spiral. Hence, Lady Deathstrike was created. Even though she's considered to be Wolverine's enemy, she's had a fair share of encounters with Deadpool as well. Initially, Deadpool fought against William Striker after he joined a reorganized Weapon X team, but he was then hired by Montello to provide Striker with protection. This led to a conflict between Wade and Lady Deathstrike. She allied with the likes of Domino, Warpath, and Sabretooth to take down Montello and, through connection, Wade as well. Lady Deathstrike makes for a formidable foe because of her powerful attributes. She has 10 retractable razor-sharp adamantium claws in her arsenal. After her transformation, she gained superhuman qualities and possessed the unique power of Cyberpathy. I don't mean right now. I'm gonna rip you in half now. That is such a jug Juggernaut Kane Marco, more popularly known as Juggernaut, is a behemoth supervillain who features in the X-Men storylines. He's Charles Xavier's stepbrother, and the difference in how they were treated as children led him to deeply resent Xavier. His abusive childhood contributed to his misguided ways later in life. During his time with the US Army, he came across the Temple of Sitarak. In the Temple of the Lord of the Oblivion, Kane found a crimson gem that gave him the powers he has today. He was also part of Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants in a bid to go against Charles Xavier. When a $20 million hit was put on Deadpool, Juggernaut was one of the many who wanted to cash in that fat check. While the two mutants fought each other, Wade filled Juggernaut's mouth with cement in an attempt to stop him. The battle was cut short when Kane's ally showed up at the scene. We see Juggernaut battle Deadpool along with Cable and Domino in the movie Deadpool 2. Dr. Killebrew, the creator himself of the Merc with a Mouth. Emrys Killebrew, referred to by everyone as Dr. Killebrew, was a leading geneticist in the Weapon X program. He was mainly responsible for turning Wade Wilson into the regenerative mutant he is today. Weapon X was shady enough, 
but the place they sent their failed experiments was worse. Dr. Killebrew, along with Ajax, ran a workshop to torture these leftover experimental mutant subjects. One of them was Wade Wilson. Dr. Killebrew sadistically tortured Wade to the point of triggering his mutations to set in. Deadpool had considered killing the scientist on multiple occasions, but something always came in the way. In the end, for a morsel of redemption, Dr. Killebrew sacrificed himself in order to let Wade Wilson win against Ajax. Some might even say that Dr. Killebrew regretted and wanted to atone for all the psychotic torture done by his practiced hand. T-Ray. Let's talk about Deadpool's very own arch-nemesis. T-Ray made the claim that he was the real Wade Wilson. Apart from sounding like attempted identity theft, it isn't unlikely considering the Deadpool universe. T-Ray claimed that while vacationing with his wife in Maine, he encountered a man named Jack. We're told that Jack is the person who's pretending to be Wade Wilson in the present day. T-Ray said that Jack attacked him and his wife in an attempt to steal T-Ray's identity. Sadly, his wife Mercedes died while he survived. Filled with insatiable hatred for Wade, he made it his life's mission to hunt down the mutant mercenary. When Deadpool tried to comprehend this tale, he nearly went insane. He began questioning his own reality, but settled on the fact that the past didn't matter and he was trying to be a better person. T-Ray is a unique supernatural fighter who accesses his powers by reading out a sequence of mystical runes. Doing so grants him powers of teleportation, levitation, weather manipulation, and the ability to transform himself physically. Bullseye. We've spoken about Deadpool's arch nemesis, but what about his best friend who thoroughly enjoys trying to murder him? Though Bullseye is considered to be mainly an enemy of Daredevil, he's had his own share of fights with Deadpool. He became Hawkeye as a part of the Dark Avengers team. Disguised as Hawkeye, Bullseye ambushed Deadpool and put an arrow through his brain, but he immediately felt conflicted about doing so. It's even revealed that Deadpool and Bullseye have been friends since they were kids and even committed arson together. They're similar in a lot of ways, and they even share the same twisted sense of humor. So, we can say that Bullseye is Deadpool's frenemy, which is oddly sweet. Evil Deadpool Most notable superheroes have an evil clone or alter ego. Spider-Man has one in the form of Carnage, and so does Green Lantern with Sinestro. Even Deadpool has a wicked counterpart known as Evil Deadpool. The creation of Evil Deadpool would mostly be credited to a British psychiatrist named Ella Whitby. She was someone who was utterly obsessed with Wade Wilson, so much so that she collected his body parts and limbs, which he had lost over time. Deadpool came across his own severed body parts in a freezer and tossed them in a dumpster with absolute revulsion. Due to his regenerative factor, those body parts began to fuse together and eventually became one entity. After hijacking a private plane of an American big shot, Evil Deadpool finally confronted Deadpool. He even bombed Wade's go-to chimichanga joint. Their second fight was brought to Captain America's attention, who reached the scene right after Evil Deadpool escaped. Evil Deadpool even planned to kill a child as a part of a smear campaign on the real Deadpool's name. Since Evil Deadpool is made up of lost Deadpool bits, he has the same powers as Wade. The only difference is that Evil Frankenstein Deadpool is a cruel homicidal maniac. Crossbones. A mercenary's worst enemy is another merc who wishes to put him out of commission permanently. Brock Rumlow, better known as Crossbones, is one of these people. As a misguided youth, he led a gang known as the Savage Crims that operated from the Lower East Side of New York City. As a mercenary, he attracted the attention of the Red Skull, aka Johann Schmidt. The Nazi Red Skull knighted Brock as Crossbones. He even worked as a double agent for both Hydra and S.H.I.E.L.D. His long-standing connections with dangerous people made him a daunting villain to come across. He was ordered to follow through with the hit that was placed on Deadpool's life. Given a sassy merc's reputation as a fighter, he wasn't added to Crossbone's list of checked out victims. Brock underwent extensive physical conditioning and mysterious enhancements. According to Daredevil, Brock's physical stature is at par with Captain America, which means he possesses peak superhuman abilities. Taskmaster Tony Masters, who goes by the alias Taskmaster, is a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. He was one of the several people who made haste to put an end to Wade for $20 million. As a fellow mercenary, Taskmaster has faced off with Deadpool just as many times as he's worked with him. The Taskmaster has what is known as photographic reflexes. This means he can mimic his opponent's fighting style during combat. When Spider-Man and Deadpool worked together, they had to face off with the deadly Taskmaster. The skeletal imitator is a challenging foe to take down, given his set of skills. But Deadpool's healing power strength stretched out their fight into a hilariously interesting one to witness. With the rising number of superheroes in his world, the Taskmaster decided to grace those around him with his extraordinary skills. He started the Taskmaster Academy to train villains and delinquents in fights against the greater good.
Hit Monkey. Not all of Deadpool's enemies are humans. Hit Monkey was from the dense wilderness of Japan's mountains. He lived there in a clan of macaques like himself. Things changed when an injured runaway assassin stumbled into their abode, but the clan decided to harbor him and help him heal. Once the assassin felt fit enough, he resumed his practice, all the while being watched by the observant primates. One monkey objected to this and was cast out of the clan. A group of men hunted down the fugitive assassin and the clan of monkeys. The young exile used the assassin's weapons and killed the men who had murdered his family. In that moment, he swore to kill any assassins that he encountered. The dead assassin's ghost became the hit monkey's mentor and taught him the way of the hitmen. Over the years, the covert macaque became somewhat of an urban legend among the assassin gangs of Japan. Coming across Deadpool, hit monkey immediately tried to kill him, while Spider-Man attempted to talk the two out of doing so. Slayback Gregory Turiaton, who goes by Slayback, came back to life mainly for the purpose of slaying Deadpool. Initially, he worked for the Weapon X program in the Department of Cybernetically Enhanced Beings. Before his true colors were shown, Gregory worked alongside Deadpool, Garrison Kane, and Sluggo. However, it was revealed that Gregory took sick pleasure in watching people be tortured and inflicting pain himself. Wade realized that Gregory was a complete psychopath and, seeing no other solutions, killed him. Somehow, Slayback's body takes years to revive, but once it does, all he wishes is for sweet revenge. Revenge. Out of his own resentment for Wade, Kane gives out vital information on Deadpool's whereabouts. Gregory then involved himself in the hunt for Tolliver's will. Slayback learned that Deadpool would end up going to a Nepalese temple. Gregory hurried there, and he even held Copycat hostage, knowing that it would force Wade to meet him. Kane also happened to be there, and he confronted Wade first while Gregory remained hidden. Once Deadpool was worn down, Slayback launched himself at his killer. He was eventually stopped and destroyed by Zero. Macho Gomez. Macho Gomez is known to be the baddest, most feared operator in the galaxy. He made his first appearance in Deadpool Volume 4, issue number 32, when he was recruited by Funsel. Funsel ran Funsel Towing and Recovery Services. When Macho married Funsel's sister, Orxa, he tried to convince Funsel to expand the activities of his company to other stuff. Commander Kak got in touch with Macho Gomez and requested that he kill Id, the selfish moon. Gomez decided to steer clear of danger and refused the job. He was also hired to take out the CEO of amalgamated armament, Reginald Harris. Macho falsely believed that Deadpool had nicked this job and went after the mercenary. Turns out, Reginald Harris had smartly faked his own death. Gomez realized this fact when he went to his house and confronted Deadpool yet again. In their tussle, Macho Gomez was shoved into an escape pod and launched into space. In a later appearance, he's seen sharing a cell with Rocket the Raccoon in a strictly guarded intergalactic prison. Dr. Bong, Lester Verd, who also goes by Dr. Bong, is mainly considered to be an enemy to Howard the Duck. Lester was bullied as a kid for being overweight. This affected his outlook on the world. He had a natural inclination towards writing, but he often abused this talent like the time he wrote a made-up expose on his professor, which got him fired. He was also unhealthily obsessed with his classmate Beverly Switzler. This led him down the ill-intentioned path of a criminal. While studying for his PhD in psychology, he first encountered Deadpool. During the Dead Reckoning timeline, Wade sought treatment from Dr. Bong his fugitive costumed alias, he faced off with Deadpool and the Secret Avengers as well. Among several others, Bong was also one of the villains who was kidnapped by the Grand Master. A primary skill that Lester possesses is super genius intelligence. It's unclear how he gained knowledge in advanced genetic engineering. Black Swan. Black Swan, who also goes by Mr. Black or Swan Boy, is considered a sworn foe of Deadpool and Agent X. Deadpool got all the credit for a mission that Black Swan had carried out. The dangerous mission consisted of taking out four influential, infamous mobsters. Black Swan took great offense to this and decided to end Wade the next time he met the mercenary. He proceeded to set up a trap in which Deadpool thought he was hired to kill Black Swan in Germany. When the two met, Mr. Black infected Wade with a psionic virus that rendered him defenseless. He made sure that his henchmen would beat Wade just enough to make sure he couldn't heal in time. Deadpool, wanting to get back at Black Swan, sought him out again, but this time armed with a bomb. The fight was both physical and mental, given Swan's powers. He was capable of psionically absorbing the powers of his opponents. Deadpool, with the aid of Agent X, was able to kill him. Black Tom Cassidy An Irish Tom Cassidy is the cousin of Sean Cassidy, a member of the X-Men. Thomas is also said to be one of the Juggernaut's only friends. The pair always got up for misadventures together. His mutant power was being able to create heat blasts through a wooden medium. A mission that went slightly amiss led to a substantial injuries to his physique. In order to heal, Tom was then injected with plant-based chemicals along with Deadpool's blood to boost regeneration. Deadpool's blood was the only reason he didn't turn into a plant mutant right away. But this didn't last long. The plant formula took over. Tom transformed him into a bizarre plant man. But after the events of M-Day, his old body was restored. Black Tom and Juggernaut encounter Deadpool during the Tolliver's Will mission. The tussle results in Tom being blasted out of a flying plane, and Deadpool catches him just in time with a rope. Eventually, Wade lets Tom fall to his death. Like a true friend, Juggernaut jumps out after him. 
Black Box, got a bed Bashur, who also went by Black Box, is a mutant with a very unique set of abilities. He was an electronic telepath, which meant he could telepathically receive, comprehend, and store data from any electronic media source. As a youth, he trained under Charles Xavier, who taught him to hone this skill. However, after being banished from Xavier's school, he gathered a small band of mercenaries into a group named Executive Elite. This gang included the likes of Comcast, Makeshift, and Reeve. Bashur and Deadpool clashed the moment Wade was hired to take out the entire group. Deadpool killed everyone, including Bashir's clone. When Bashir's clone manufacturing vat started malfunctioning, he came up with an alternate solution to show up in direct combat. He developed mechanically advanced armor and knighted himself as Black Box. Black Box attempted to brainwash Wade into killing his long-standing friend, Cable. He even worked with Deadpool and Cable after this altercation on the hunt for the Dominion objective. Garrison Kane Garrison Kane started out as Deadpool's teammate before turning into his foe. Kane was part of a Cable mercenary group known as the Six Pack. The Six Pack consisted of Cable, Hammer, Domino, Grizzly, Deadpool, and a few more. In a mission where the team was tricked by Cable's evil clone Strife into giving him vital information, Kane lost his arms and legs. Garrison was also part of the Weapon X program. He was a subject alongside Deadpool. He was given cybernetically enhanced limbs and made into a superhuman weapon for the military. After this enhancement, Kane founded a group called Weapon Prime for the sole purpose of butting heads with Six Pack. But the members of the Six Pack quickly took down Kane's Weapon Prime team. Later on, Abel and Kane even tried to put the differences aside and work together again. Garrison Kane was the one who pointed Slay back in the right direction while he hunted for Wade. In the fight during Tolliver Will's mission, Kane wore out Deadpool until Slayback attacked him. Princess Teela. Teela Kaldassian belonged to the Crook royal family. The conflict between the Omega Confederation and the Crook finally came to an end when the natives kicked the invaders out of their world. The Crook then hired a band of mercenaries to guard their previously occupied mines. Not accepting bitter defeat, the Omega Confederation hired the Deadpool Corps. Princess Teela now has beef with more than one Deadpool. The Deadpool Corps is a gang of Deadpools from across multiple universes. The Deadpool Corps effortlessly took out the other gang of mercenaries, while Princess Teela witnessed the whole affair. She didn't have enough time to warn her family and was forced to face off with Lady Deadpool. The Deadpool Corps broke off their loyalty with the Omega Confederation and decided to bring about changes to the Crook homeworld instead. The world broke out in a civil war, with the sides divided into those who followed the old-fashioned traditional king and those who looked up to Princess Teela, who was a lot more progressive in her approach. The whole debacle ended when the Deadpool Corps robbed the Crook bank and fled. Alison Kemp Alison Kemp was a former FBI agent who was mortally wounded by Deadpool's antics. She was left immobile from the waist down because of an explosion caused by Deadpool. During her 11 years of working for the FBI, she was guilty of embezzling lush funds of over $7 million. After years of struggling with her injuries, Kemp decided it was time for revenge. She used the false premise of an unsuccessful FBI joint operation to lure Deadpool exactly where she wanted him. Kemp also planned to use Deadpool as a crutch to retire, so she could could properly carry out her plan to kill him. She rounded up two of Deadpool's foes, Slayback and T-Ray. However, she sent Slayback to kill Deadpool after inadequate training, which resulted in his brutal death. Kemp played her second hand in the form of T-Ray, but Deadpool slashed him down as well. When Kemp and Deadpool finally confronted each other, he nearly convinced her to give up her whole ruse. We're made to believe that Kemp is willing to let go of her revenge, but this illusion is shattered when she willingly sacrifices herself to set off a bomb that would kill them both. Ellen Whitby. Deadpool was kept in Crossmore Prison in England for a brief period. The Crossmore Prison, also known as Her Majesty's Ultra Maximum Security Prison, is a highly secured facility for dangerous criminals, especially superhumans or mutants. Dr. Ellen Whitby offered her help to Deadpool and even helped him escape the prison. We realize that she is, in fact, unhealthily infatuated with Wade. Much to her dismay, when she finally confessed her love to him, Wade rejected her. Ellen then became somewhat of a stalker and hunted down Deadpool after he escaped and confessed her love once more. She even went as far as to put on a Deadpool costume to truly show her devotion. A quick scan of her apartment and fridge revealed to Wade how obsessed she was with him. She'd kept all his severed body parts that Wade had lost over the years like they were collectibles. She's credited as the creator of evil Deadpool. When Wade finally tells her that he's in love with someone else, Ellen shoots herself in the head. Vetis. Vetis was a mid-level demon from hell. His nefarious scheme was to trick people in exchange for money and to spread his demonic influence across Earth. He chose Earth because, in hell, he'd be on Mephisto's radar. During the Bronze Age of the X-Men comics, there was a story arc that followed Vetis making a deal with Deadpool. Wade's end of the bargain was that he had to make sure Tony Stark was dead drunk so Vetis could easily trick him into making a deal. For doing so, Wade would be rewarded with a laser disc factory. However, Deadpool couldn't bring himself to push Tony into this scheme and fooled Vetis 
Vettis by disguising himself as Iron Man. Before Vettis could confront Wade, he was dragged back to hell by Mephisto. Years later, Deadpool was forced to kill four of Vettis' victims, or else his friend would die. Vettis absorbed the souls of the people Wade killed and their abilities. When Mephisto was alerted of Vettis' activities, he released his victims' trapped souls. Yet once, before Vettis could confront and try to exact his revenge, he was dragged back to hell. Vettis' plan to kill Deadpool and take over Mephisto's realm never saw the light of day again. Corrado Colaruno. Out of the many crooks and criminals that mercenaries have to be wary of, one was named Corrado Colaruno. He was a bank robber who took extreme measures to protect himself. Corrado was one of the many who sold their souls in exchange for some feeble powers. He made a deal with the demon Vetis to remain impervious to any danger. Corrado and his partner in crime, Anthony, took great pride in the fact that they were on New Jersey's most wanted list. After a fine day of robbery, their luck ran out as they ran right into Deadpool. Vetis had made a deal with Deadpool in which he had to collect the souls of four people. The first one of out of four of these people was Corrado. The driver of their van was stabbed in the noggin by Wade, and Corrado was shot in the eye but survived due to his given powers. In Deadpool's gruesome style, Corrado was left to slowly suffocate with his head encased in metal. Artie. Artie started out as a noble lifeguard with well-placed intentions. Artie saw a boat in the distant sea tipped over and felt horrible for not being able to save everyone who was on it. He was one of the few reckless ones who had made deals with Vettis. In exchange for his soul, Vettis gave Artie the power to summon any and all sea creatures to his aid. He was the second one out of the four people Deadpool had to kill to save his friend, Michael. Deadpool pretended to drown in the ocean, and then Artie swam towards him to help. Deadpool then attempted to drown the man. However, due to the powers given to him, Artie was able to breathe underwater. He then summoned sharks to tear Deadpool apart and even drag his body back to shore. Artie claims that he isn't a killer, instead he saves people's lives. Nevertheless, Deadpool stabbed Artie and the scent of his blood attracted the sharks which in turn began to devour him. All things considered, Deadpool seemed like the villain in this one. Bobby Tisdale. A sleazy Bobby was the third out of the four people who made a deal with Vettis. Deadpool had to kill to save his friend. Bobby sold his soul to Vettis in exchange for shapeshifting powers. The reason for wanting these powers was that Bobby wished to shapeshift into desirable looking people so more women would sleep with him. First, he changed into Luke Cage in a bid to get with Jessica Jones. But Bobby oversold his impression of being Luke Cage, which gave him away. When Deadpool confronted him, Bobby turned into Black Widow and fled into Times Square. There, he transformed into a helpless cheerleader and pleaded for Daredevil's help. Deadpool finally cornered Bobby and broke his neck, putting an end to the nuisance, and Vettis got Bobby's soul and powers back. Daniel Gump, the last person out of the four people that Vettis made a deal with. Daniel Gump was a filthy rich businessman who sold his soul to Vettis in exchange for precognitive abilities, which meant he gained the power to predict the future. Gump hired a group of mercenaries to protect himself from Deadpool and superior Spider-Man. The two paired up when Deadpool was on his mission to take out all of Vettis' victims. While fighting their way through the building to get to Gump, Deadpool poked fun at all the villains that Spider-Man has fought so far. Wade claimed that Doc Ock is the lamest of them all, which is funny considering superior Spider-Man is Dr. Octavius' consciousness in Peter Parker's body. As a precognitive, Daniel had predicted this attack and strapped himself with explosives as a trap. Another group of mercenaries dropped from the ceiling as Deadpool and Spidey began fighting them off. Eventually, Deadpool disarmed Gump's bomb switch and sliced right through him. At last, Vettis greedily claimed his final soul. Professor Veronica. As her name suggests, Veronica was a professor and a skilled geneticist at Empire State University of the Reality Earth 2149. This reality is also known as the Zombieverse because of the virus that broke out and turned many superhuman beings into zombie flesh eaters. Those who survived, like Veronica, barricaded themselves into the university and began working on a cure for the virus. Deadpool, along with Headpool, Dr. Betty of AIM, and Bill, visited the Zombieverse and were immediately ambushed by zombies. They're attacked by a zombie Meccano Marauder only to be rescued by Professor Veronica. Dr. Betty and Professor Veronica collaborated to formulate a cure. However, to deem it safe, Veronica needed a zombie test subject and asked Deadpool to retrieve one for her. Deadpool captures Cypher for her and is rewarded by Veronica sleeping with him. While she helped the gang return to their home reality, they were faced with the zombies, Armadillo, Absorbing Man, and Aguila. Deadpool killed these zombies, but the Absorbing Man managed to infect Veronica. She died by falling off the roof while in pursuit of Dr. Betty. Anastasia. All is fair in love and war. This is the case with 
Anastasia. Anna and Deadpool. She was a former FBI agent who turned to exotic dancing and eventually became a talented tattoo artist. It's said that many mobsters fell in love with Anna, but she was dating a cop named Fred Pearson. Through Anna, Fred hired Deadpool to kill all of her mobster admirers under the false premise that they threatened to kill Fred's family. However, Anna and Wade began to feel attracted to each other. After Anna killed Fred's wife, Deadpool began raising his suspicions about the whole ruse and Anna was forced to attack him. Fred and she proceeded to bury Deadpool alive. When Anna realized that Fred was lying to her about the amount of money they would get as insurance from his wife's murder, she went back to unearth Wade. To prove her trust in him, Anna gave him her gun for a fight. Deadpool, who despises being double-crossed, shot Anna with her own gun. The Selfish Moon This kill was quite a feat for Deadpool. He can boast about how he quite literally killed a planet. This Freudian fever dream was of a sentient moon who was the brother of Ego, a living planet. Both the sibling planets developed certain levels of intelligence and consciousness. While Ego wanted to remain hidden, it wanted to float around the galaxy and party till the sun came around, or even find a sentient sun to party with. However, its loneliness got the better of him, and he began to destroy entire planets by creating seismic waves. During such a tantrum, it destroyed the planet Ongulia. However, this time, he wouldn't get away with it. The surviving Ongulians and their commander Kak then hired Deadpool to exact revenge and kill Id, the selfish moon. Deadpool's battleground of choice was the planet U-235, where he evacuated its residents, the Urulians, not before making them create crop circle patterns that pissed Id off enough that he wished to devour the planet. The genius of Deadpool's plan lay in the fact that the planet was rigged with nuclear fission bombs, which completely annihilated Id, the selfish moon. Champion. Trichoslatteris also goes by Champion or Champion of the Universe. He's an ancient being who came into existence over 5 billion years ago. He's said to be one of the elders of the universe. The godly being was convinced that the Deadpool Corps, which recruits only Deadpools from multiple realities, wasn't enough to protect the universes. When he went to question them on this fact, Trico was swindled and left on a remote planet by the Deadpool Corps. The gardener, known as Ord Zeons, came across a stranded Trico and rescued him. When he stormed to confront the team a second time, he ended up joining them instead. Now, as champion pool, he assigned himself as the leader of the group. Being once bitten twice shy didn't apply to him, and he was abandoned on a moon once again. This time, his galactic motorcycle fuel tank was empty, so he couldn't escape either way. Champion is said to be a cosmic powerhouse who's fueled by energies that were created during the birth of the universe. This attribute, however, didn't prevent him from being fooled by the Deadpool core. Death Trap. After Deadpool fought off T-Ray and Typhoid Mary, he made his way to the Hell House in search of more fights. This is where he encountered a mysterious masked man who made a vague plea for help to rescue a princess from a land of great evil. Even though any payment wasn't mentioned, Deadpool agreed in hopes that the princess would be attractive enough. As soon as Wade stepped on his jet, he was electrocuted into unconsciousness. As this villain's name suggests, he invented various kinds of death traps, as he saw death as an art form. Death Trap, also known as Alistair Armstrong, took great great interest in Deadpool after watching him fight in the Hell House. After trapping Deadpool, he subjected him to slow torture using a sadistic teddy bear death traps. One of these traps was a three-ton teddy bear that was being lowered inch by inch every time Deadpool spoke, to the point that it would eventually crush him to death. The teddy bear theme was meant to symbolize Deadpool's childishness and immaturity. After being knocked out again, Deadpool woke up in a strange location with only a note that said, This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Deadpool Kid. In the Deadpool comic volume titled Deadpool, Merc with a Mouth, we get to see a bizarre villain in the shape of Deadpool Kid, who's the Wild West counterpart of Wade Wilson on Earth 1108. In his reality, Deadpool Kid was a fugitive on charges of software piracy, arson, bank heists, and starting a stampede of pygmy goats through an orphanage. He's seen tagging along with Deadpool of our reality and Deadpool of Earth 2149. Along with the other Deadpools, he took over the town that Sheriff Nick Fury and Bounty Hunter Logan were in charge of and rubbed this fact in their faces. Wade Wilson of Earth 616 started to feel annoyed by his nuisance of a counterpart and shot him in the head. Somehow, Deadpool Kid survived and was enlisted by Deadpool to hunt down the members of the Deadpool Corps. Deadpool Kid was seemingly killed in the war that raged between the evil and good Deadpool Corps. Deadpool Kid's abilities are the same as those of Deadpool in our reality. Father. Father is one of Deadpool's more ominous antagonists. He played a bigger role in major events than just being a petty criminal. Father was the creator of the project named Weapon Infinity, which was just another limb for the Deathlock project. The story arc follows the events of every superhuman being turned into an army of Deathlocks. When his Weapon Infinity faced a threat, Father sent this army through time and space to destroy whatever threatened his precious life work. Deadpool finally managed to confront this tyrant and slice his head off. He slithered back into his underground city, full of robotically intelligent 
Sergeant Sentinels to heal his injuries. He even had to face off with the Secret Avengers as they continued to disrupt his plans. Father had the excellent skill of persuasion. He was able to make Deadpool second-guess his own decision. The source of this skill has yet to be discovered. It could be his Weapon X programming, superhuman attributes, psychic powers, or plain old charisma. But Deadpool was able to snap out of it dead presidents. Michael Hawthorne, also known as the Necromancer, decided he wanted to resurrect dead presidents. Through newly learned sorcery, the former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent brought every dead U.S. president back to life. Michael believed that they'd bring order and restore the country to its former glory. However, the resurrected presidents came with an intense desire to destroy the entire country and build it from scratch again. They also had superpowers and were extremely corrupt. While Captain America dealt with Michael, Deadpool faced off with a zombie, Franklin D. Roosevelt, in Manhattan. Deadpool pumps him with a round of bullets, but got headbutted by the dead president. A team of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents rushed to the scene and witnessed Deadpool stab Franklin with his katana. Roosevelt then let out beams of blue lightning and exploded. The team offered Deadpool a job to hunt down other resurrected presidents like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Deadpool stormed Liberty Hall to find all the undead presidents hanging out. With the help of Doctor Strange, Deadpool worked his way through all the dead presidents and killed them. Switchblade Mercy Sisters Also known as the homicidal Britney Spears sisters or the Switchblade sisters, the first kill of the twins, Mary and Grace, were their own parents. If anyone dared to annoy them or even breathe wrongly near them, they'd be killed in cold blood. A few of the victims were a delivery boy that the twins deemed too nosy and the quarterback of their rival school. When their school's director began noticing their absence, they killed her too, with a hockey stick. They cruelly took pleasure in killing a famous rock star named Killer Dick. Eventually, a huge hit was put on their heads and Deadpool began to hunt them down. In an attempt to kill Wade, Mary tried to run him over with a car, but she'd forgotten her own seatbelt, which resulted in her flying out through the windshield. Grace dragged her sister back to their summer home, where she was forced to kill Mary as a way to put her out of her misery. Grace wanted to avenge her twin's death and confronted Deadpool again, who, as we can all guess by now, shot her in the face. Black Talon. There have been a few versions of the Black Talon. We're talking about Samuel Baron. Baron was a voodoo cult leader who resurrected Wonder Man and sent him to disrupt a meeting that the Avengers were holding. He even bravely tried to fight off the Avengers and held his own until Scarlet Witch showed up. He joined the Lethal Legion, run by the Grim Reaper, to defeat the Avengers. He battled She-Hulk and Deadpool. Baron created a team known as the Exhumed, who were dead mutants brought back to life. While fighting Deadpool, Wade mercilessly made fun of Baron's costume and claimed he looked like a chicken. This might be part of the reason why Baron gave up on the supervillain lifestyle and resorted to selling drugs to the Hood, who also go by the name of Parker Robbins. Baron encountered Simon Garth, who was carrying the head of zombie Deadpool to sell to the Hood as well. Marcus the Centaur Marcus the diabetic gladiator centaur werewolf with symbiote and robot legs, or Marcus the Centaur for short, is one of the most fascinating foes of Deadpool. Originally from ancient Greece, he was bitten by a werewolf. All parts of him were tied together by a symbiote, which gave him an odd mix of abilities. Dracula referred to Marcus as the perfect soldier with no weaknesses and used him as a covert weapon. Dracula sent a team of four mercenaries and named them the Frightful Four. The group, which included Marcus, Frankenstein's monster, the living mummy and Xax were sent to hunt down Deadpool and Shikla. The battle ensued in St. Patrick's Cathedral. The mummy transfigured Deadpool's gun into a snake and tried to strangle Marcus. As the clock struck midnight, Marcus asked for a break since his blood sugar was dropping low. As they resumed fighting, Deadpool commented on the werewolf centaur's diabetes. Marcus even revealed his fear of losing his hooves to the disease. Deadpool then proceeded to slice off his hooves, trap him in wet cement and run a steamroller over him to make sure the job was done. Dracula. This count wanted to do more than just feast on his victim's blood. In the modern age, the Lord of the Darkness wanted to bring together all the monsters of the world and rule over them with an iron fist. To accomplish this, Dracula had to marry the queen of an ancient kingdom of monsters. Dracula thought this to be Shikla, and so hired Deadpool to bring her to him. But when Deadpool missed his deadline, Dracula wanted him dead for it. It's revealed that Shikla isn't a queen, but a princess. Dracula killed all her brothers to ensure that his plan was carried out smoothly. But it completely backfired, as after fighting off the Frightful Four, Shikla married Deadpool instead. All her forces marched a battle against Dracula. The Count even tried to petrify her by using Medusa's head, but Deadpool showed up just in time and stabbed the Vampire Lord with his own arm. The cancer from Deadpool's blood negated Dracula's healing powers. 
Typhoid Mary. Mary Alice Walker, who's better known as the deadly Typhoid Mary. She possesses the mutant powers of a psyche. She's capable of kindling fires, moving objects around, and getting into people's heads. Her psyche is said to be split into multiple alter egos. They were named Mary Walker, Typhoid Mary, and Bloody Mary. She's one of the most vicious people who worked for Kingpin. While she was kept in a psychiatric institution, her persona, Mary Walker, hired Deadpool to kill her, while Typhoid Mary hired him to help her break out of the facility. On the other hand, Bloody Mary Mary hired Denise Baranga to help her escape. Deadpool confronted Denise but refused to kill Mary Walker. Mary Typhoid and Deadpool even worked together for a bit. Deadpool didn't approve of the fact that Typhoid Mary had killed defenseless people in the past. When Typhoid found out that Deadpool was infatuated with Siren, she disguised herself as Siren and tricked Deadpool into sleeping with her. Feeling disgusted and betrayed, Deadpool gave up his attempt to help her. Eventually, Mary was kept at the superhuman prison known as the Raft. Madcap. Madcap initially started out as a religious man who went on a trip with his family. A terrorist experiment done by AIM killed everyone who was on the trip. The chemical that AIM had developed was known as Chemical X07, and a tanker full of this compound crashed into the bus they were on, killing everyone but the man who would become Madcap. He then developed the mutant abilities of regeneration and driving people clinically insane. To fully step into his alias, he got himself a bubble gun and donned a stolen Harlequin costume. Thus, Madcap was born. He then wandered through New York City. City, driving people to insanity for fun, not really caring if they got in harm's way. When Deadpool ran into Madcap, the two got into an argument. Madcap unsuccessfully tried to drive Deadpool crazy until Thor and Daredevil showed up. Thor reduced the two to dust, but only Deadpool survived, with Madcap clinging onto Deadpool's mind. Later on, Madcap even impersonated Deadpool and killed innocent people. Den Vakri. Den Vakri was an ancient deity who was trapped in an Asgardian artifact by Odin. With no corporeal body, Den only craved beauty but needed a host body to fulfill her desires. When archaeologist Curtis Nolan stumbled upon this artifact, Den began to lure him with flowery words. She promised him money good looks and influence in exchange for occupying his body. However, at the last minute, she decided to take over Thor's body instead. She transformed herself into a monstrous bear and managed to render him injured. This is where Deadpool stepped in to help Thor, and both of them trapped Den Vakre into her vessel once more, where she could do no more harm. Grasshopper. This unnamed youth wanted to go down the same path as the original grasshopper, Dog Taggart. The second grasshopper made a replica of his suit and leapt all the way from New York City to Milwaukee to be a part of the Great Lakes Avengers. Unluckily for him, Grasshopper ran into a disgruntled Deadpool who had just been rejected from the Great Lakes team. Deadpool decided to snap his neck in anger. When Deadpool and Thanos were stuck in Mephisto's domain, they encountered Grasshopper once again. He confronted Deadpool with an army of all the people he'd killed over the years. Grasshopper's time for revenge had finally come. Butler. Butler, who's also known as Bartol Utler, was part of the Weapon Plus project. He was desperate and in search of a cure for his sister's cancer, and he realized that Deadpool had been cured after his procedure at the Weapon X program. As the years went by, Butler covertly sent teams to drug Deadpool and collect his tissue samples for experimentation. He began testing out his theories on people in North Korea, which resulted in an army of super soldiers for the country's military. Butler finally decided to drop the cover and kidnap Deadpool. He brought Wade into his lab to formulate a cure for his dying sister. Butler's own sister didn't want to be cured in this excruciating way, but to get Deadpool to comply, Butler kidnapped his wife and daughter. Having no more incentive to help Butler, Wade killed him for it. The Paguros. The Paguros were a notorious mafia family that operated from New York. Over the years, the family stepped back from active conflicts and decided to become a supportive, guiding figure for other gangs, making them vital for their survival. All the other gangs had to follow one rule, always keep the Paguros a secret. They also put a hit on Punisher's head, but no one managed to kill him. When the Punisher realized this fact, he began hunting for the Paguros himself. Punisher also enlisted the help of the Thunderbolts to track down the mafia family, who tried so hard to kill him. Around this time, Thanos' invasion of Earth began, and the Paguros believed that the Punisher was finally off their trail. When three of their main leaders entered Peace Pizza, they met Deadpool, who was also part of the Thunderbolts at the time. Naturally, he shot them on sight, ending the whole hunt. White Man The White Man was a mob boss who had a slimy grip over New York City. He killed a harmless owner of a small market named Mr. Camacho. A grief-stricken Mrs. Camacho sought out the help of Heroes for Hire, of which Deadpool was a part. Deadpool disguised himself as a mobster and pretended to infiltrate White Man's territory. Wade was then taken to the White Man's headquarters by his henchmen. As Deadpool confronted the White Man, he forced the mobster to turn into stone. The cops thought this was just a statue, and he was sold at an auction. Years later, White Man freed himself and set out to get his 
his revenge on Deadpool. The white man took over an entire floor of the Empire State Building and demanded the presence of Deadpool. After a long and arduous fight, they ended up at the South Street Seaport. The whole debacle ended when Deadpool drowned White Man, and there his body lay at the bottom of the sea. Reeve, part of Black Box's group, the executive elite, were Reeve and Makeshift, who were given the responsibility of hunting down Deadpool. Makeshift shoots a high-energy blast into Deadpool's neck and captures him. Accompanied by Comcast, Reeve and Makeshift transport Deadpool to the executive elite headquarters, where they officially introduce the group. They also put a depowering collar on him. When has Deadpool ever been contained? He broke out of their grip and killed Reeve and Makeshift, but not before attacking the rest of the team as well. However, Reeve popped up again. It's revealed that, along with his own clones, Black Box had cloned Reeve. She immediately set out to kill Deadpool, Cable, and the cat. It's unknown whether she reached her targets at all. She doesn't have any superhuman attributes, but is an excellent swordswoman and skilled killer. Sluggo Bernard Hoister was also known as Sluggo before he joined the Weapon X program. As a mercenary, he met his fellow hired killers, Deadpool, Slayback, and Garrison Kane. All of them worked for Tolliver for a brief period, and Sluggo befriended Copycat, who was Deadpool's ex-lover. After Tolliver died, a desperate hunt for his will began. In a bid to get information before his teammates, Sluggo tried to get information out of Copycat's mother on the location of Tolliver's will. He was arrested for trying to shoot his ex-girlfriend in the head. He makes an appearance alongside the likes of Macho Gomez, Taskmaster, and Blind and their shared desire to kill Deadpool. Sluggo's reasoning for wanting to kill his former ally was that Deadpool is a bad friend. Tiamat Tiamat can't be considered wholly a villain. He was an alien warrior who dedicated his life to fighting the Messiah. The Messiah was a nightmare disguised as a savior. He went around galaxies instilling what he called peace. For him, peace meant sending people into a trance of mindless joy and stripping away all balance and their free agency. Foolishly content, the races stopped working and evolving, which meant imminent death. Tiamat's life purpose was to put an end to this passive tyranny. When he landed on Earth, he realized that the intergalactic law firm Lando Lockman and Lake considered him to be the bad guy. The company had chosen two heroes to deal with him once he'd arrived. The two chosen ones were none other than Deadpool and Captain America, who were effortlessly defeated by Tiamat. Once the pair confronted the alien soldier again, his focus narrowed down solely to defeating them, and he got distracted from his messiah mission. The Elder Council of Tiamat's race realized that their champion had gone off his path and deemed Deadpool to be worthy of slaying the messiah. White Lightning. Clovis Main and his goons were moonshiners from the backwoods of Georgia. They would ambush and rob gas stations, tour buses, and loan shops. Clovis usually got away with such buffoonery because his uncle was the local sheriff. During one such heist, Clovis had the rotten luck of trying to rob a bus that Deadpool was on. It's revealed that Clovis gained electrical superpowers while he was still working at his moonshine. The copper coils were struck by lightning that gave him these powers, thus making him White Lightning. When a new sheriff takes over, she arrests Clovis and all of his associates who were complicit in the robberies and illegal liquor trade. A silver lining is that at least this one doesn't end in gruesome death. Down. Marvelous verdict. So there we come to the end of the long list of every Deadpool villain to exist, ever. When you have a job like Deadpool, danger is at every turn. It may feel like every other person in the neighbor wants him dead, but so far, Wade's done a great job at evading permanent death, even if it meant getting shot at, stabbed, or <laughs> even dismembered. He joked through it all. Most importantly, he saw love, kindness, and even friendship in his own enemies, albeit killing them in a different way. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.